Hey there, welcome to another episode in the Behind the Image series. This is a series where we like to take images that I've photographed and talk about my thought process and break down different things that we can learn from how I captured it and what I was going for. So I am taking you behind the scenes to a wedding that I recently photographed in Chicago. So something you should know about this day is that this bride and groom gave me three hours of portrait time, which sounds like a dream. However, when you have three hours of portraits at multiple locations that you all had to ride on a bus to get to, um, sometimes your creativity starts to wane a little bit just because you are in new places like every 30 minutes, getting off the bus, trying to figure out what you wanna do. I am used to being in a situation where I have one location that I've gotta make amazing and that's where I thrive, is one location, one spot, many shots. This was the complete opposite of what I'm used to. We were hopping around to different areas throughout Chicago at these different locations, especially the Art Institute. They had specific areas that they wanted portraits. So I've got multiple locations that we have to be driven to and then at each location there are you know sub locations where I need to make sure they have portrait at every single one and I feel like my strength is that when I'm shooting in one spot and I can get creative that I evolve to a place of epicness and evolving to a place of epicness takes staying in one spot and getting to a place where you're like oh I mastered the composition here I created something awesome I just needed some time to warm up and really kind of work the location into the ultimate portrait that is hard to do when you're like, portrait here, portrait here, portrait there. So this specific portrait, this area that we were shooting in, it's the infamous staircases within the Art Institute. And when you walk in, you can just tell, this is awesome, this is really cool. I should be able to capture something really sweet in here, really, really cool. But I needed some time. And I feel like what worked well in this place was that I did the standard portrait where like, yeah, cool, the lines are leading to them, but I did the evolution and I worked the room in a way that allowed me to eventually capture a portrait that I ultimately loved. The composition was spot on and it looked more like something that I could leave feeling like that was, some, I'm proud of that. I'm, uh, it's the go home happy shot. So this particular location, if you, Google it. If you try to find it on Pinterest, there's a lot of different things that can happen in this exact space. And so in my mind, I knew, okay, this could be epic, but I had to take my normal journey in a portrait location and do it in half the time. So I felt a little bit rushed, but I was able to take a standard portrait with some decent composition and work my way to make it epic, epic. Like, it's something that I'm super proud of. So I want to take you behind the scenes. You can watch me shoot in the, this location and you can see almost what I'm thinking in my head. I take them and I evolve what my ideas are to ultimately get to a place of creating something that's really spectacular instead of average. So you're laughing at him, uh, me, there you go. Laughing at him, big time, like you should feel ridiculous. Big time, big time, big time. Yes, 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 laughing at me. You're like, Caitlin, you're crazy, stop. And laughing back at me one more time. Perfect. That was awesome. Let's do one epic facing each other shot. What? Well, that was awesome. <laughs> um, like really straightforward. The light is glowing on the back of you. It's perfect. If you want to put an arm flopping over the shoulder, let that wrist relax. You're going to pull her in tight. Michael, can you fluff the back of the dress? You guys are good. Come on. Um, I may actually, you know what, I lie. Can, can y'all come towards me? I'm getting like the big swoop, so keep on coming. I'll tell you when to stop. I may even get you to dip. Right there's perfect. Can y'all dip towards me a little bit when you, yes, now forehead to forehead for me. Beautiful. Gorgeous, pull her in tight, nice and tight. Share a kiss however you want. Laughing at, oh yes, keep on kissing guys. It's your wedding day. Forehead to forehead, you can just hang out there. You're just smiling at each other. Now we gotta do a nuzzle. Sorry, Matt, gotta do a nuzzle. If you want to almost close your eyes like you're looking down towards his shoulder. Yeah, oh, this is it. This is it, don't move. Come on through, you're fine, you're fine. Come on through. Y'all don't lose it, don't lose it. Stay just like you are. And just Nicole's looking at me. Oh, heavens, don't move. I am dying. Eyes down one more time. Gorgeous. Looking at me one more time this way. I'm getting all the composition. This doesn't look real. Now he's gonna make you laugh. Pull her in, make her laugh a little bit. 
Tickle her a little. <laughs> you're laughing right at each other. All right, looking right at each other. Guys, you're about to go get married. Cannot wait. That was one of the best spots. Maybe beat, maybe beating the water. Let's go up here. Okay, so you saw me moving around this location using my 28 to 70. Thank goodness for that lens. That's a whole other episode. But um, I was able to have a lot of freedom to create different compositions. But as I'm moving around, I might, my brain creatively is all over the place. But eventually I start getting to a place where it leads me to the portrait that I ultimately was so proud of. And so you saw me do that. Now I wanna show you some of the images that I was capturing and break down how my mind, my, the creative side of my brain got to a place of finally finding what I ultimately wanted in this space. All right, so this image, this image is pretty standard, right? And I feel like this is the image that anybody with any general sense of composition would walk into this space and do, right? Send them dead center, use the lead line of the stairs to go across the image. It's There's nothing crazy special about this. I think if I could change anything, I'd pull them two feet forward so that their head wasn't competing so much with the stairs. But ultimately, because of how zoomed out and wide this is, we also don't have a lot of compression. And I think something I realized, I remember shooting this thinking, I don't like the busyness of those rocks. I don't like the busyness of seeing every single spindle, every flap of the fabric of the curtain. There's got to be a way to capture the epicness of this space and the composition without the distracting lack of compression in the background. But in order to do that, I had to make adjustments. And it's not like I heard these things in my head. And it's not like I even had these exact thoughts. I think subconsciously, the journey to the way that my brain works when I'm shooting, I think ultimately I knew the background needs to be simplified, but I also need to keep the composition. So that led me to this. This image, they are still center focused, right? So it's a center weighted photo. The composition is still leading to them with the staircase, but because I am closer to them and it seems like maybe I dipped down a little bit here to ha and had them tilt, I'm not sure. But if I had them tilt a little bit, then I could still have the curve of the staircase right where I wanted it behind their heads. But I still saw the rocks. I still saw the heaviness down there that I didn't love. And so, but I found something I did love. So the one step of improvement was I liked the higher compression. I liked the fact that the background started to melt away right behind their heads. So then we move on to this. We have even more compression, which I love but we're losing something. We're losing the epicness of the composition because this could have been shot anywhere. The staircase behind them, you can't see the epic curve of that. So if we want to take the coolness of the location and the curve of the staircase, and we want the compression, then I've got to find a way to marry the two. This is also great because I was, do you see the rock? I'm getting rid of that rock. For so, I do remember thinking to myself, I don't like those rocks. They're just heavy. They really pulled down the image. So that led me to this final composition that got rid of the rocks, used the epicness of the curve of the stairs, increased the composition, but still had them in a very flattering pose. Ah. So I love this image. I love the image because the rocks are nowhere to be found. They're right below here. Okay, so I got rid of those. I, I don't know why, maybe it's a blessing or a curse, but sometimes things like that really bug me. And I think the reason it bugs me is because in my mind, I knew they were distracting from the cool elements of the spot. The cool elements are we've got lead lines streaming down the back from those windows, but then we have the epicness of the curved stairs and then you have just chunky rocks at the bottom. There's no need for that. So I got rid of those. That's win number one. Win number two is that I have a really good use of negative space and then I have a lead line that is perfectly leading the, oh, I just love, it. even just doing that line just makes me feel like, ah, I. I'm very proud of myself. Okay, so I love this. The reason why I think that this didn't happen at the beginning was because there was a lot of factors that I had to, my the back of my brain, I don't know, is it the back of your brain? Where's the creative side of your, whatever the creative part of my brain, it I needed to start shooting and just trying something in order to come to a place where I could recognize what was holding me up. And honestly, until I'm going through this, I didn't even remember it was the rocks, but it was the rocks. So the rocks, this is another lesson. Sometimes the hurdles in, this is actually a life lesson. Sometimes the hurdles and the things you want to avoid in your life are the very things that lead you to finding what you ultimately want, which is getting rid of the rocks, the things that I didn't like. Ultimately, I would never have found this if I wasn't cropping up, but I was cropping up to get rid of the thing that I hated. So the thing that I hated led me to the thing that I loved. I really think this was great also because even though I was shooting from a lower angle, 
she doesn't look awkward. She doesn't look like she's in an awkward pose. It She literally looks like she just walked out of Vogue. So I love this because it was a great use of negative space. The light was even, the rocks are gone, and the epic composition of the stairs was kept intact. And before we go, let me just address the elephant in the room before we get comments about it. If you are in the nature of thinking that everything in the background needs to be properly exposed, um, I don't agree with you. <laughs> and it's okay to have different styles. Let me explain why. If you could see the true darkness and depth of every building in the background, every tree, every leaf, everything, first of all, that would add an element to this that I personally don't want. I love the neutral tone to this, right? I love that you can still see the lines of the window framing, that that's not completely blown out, but I love that it's neutral in its tone and in its coloring. I don't care that the background is slightly blown out and neither does my couple. And there's an artistic element to deciding that you're okay with that. So that is just my personal opinion, but I know we'll get questions about, or just comments about how overexposed the background is. I don't care. I love it and they love it. That was, it was purposeful because if I wanted to with all that Lightroom could do, I could have exposed for the background. I could have brought it back down. But if I do that, I'm bringing in more distractions that I don't think is necessary. So I love it. So if you enjoyed this, getting into my brain, seeing what I do behind the scenes in real life, not filming a course that was pre-planned, I think it's one of the greatest ways for a photographer to educate themselves, to be able to watch someone do it in real life with real problems and real obstacles, real time decisions. If you enjoyed this, then you would love All Access. What is All Access? All Access is our membership for photographers. It's the most affordable resource we have. If, you've, if you're thinking to yourself, I'd love to learn from Caitlin, but I can't afford a $400 course. I get it. That's why we created something that you can learn from, have hours upon hours of content and coverage from different weddings and shoots for only $29 a month. Actually, if you want to try it out to see if you love it, you can try it out for a few days for free. We recently just launched KJ All Access 2.0 that has built-in filtering features because there's over 300 episodes with different problems, different scenarios. Now you can find what you need for your solutions faster. Plus we added a community aspect where you can talk to other members and get help outside of a Facebook group. Facebook can be a little crazy. So we built in so many new features. There's membership perks from other companies that we love and trust in the industry. If you've never tried All Access, now is the time. It's basically this, but hours and hours and hours of it. So check out the link below if you want more information. Thank you for tuning in. If you want to learn like this and not miss a video in the future, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.